We see temporary pacemakers in the cardiac ICU all the time, but do you understand how they work? It took me a long time to get my head around some of the concepts, so in this video we'll be discussing temporary epicardial pacemakers and sensitivity. My name is Josh McClarty. I'm an ICU registrar from the Alfred Hospital in Melbourne. Let's start by reviewing pacemaker modes. Pacemaker modes for temporary epicardial pacemakers typically have three letters. The first letter indicates the chamber that is paced, either the atria, the ventricles, or both. The second letter indicates the chamber that is sensed, either the atria, the ventricles, or both. The third letter indicates the response to pacing, that is, what happens when the pacemaker senses something. These are some common modes used in temporary epicardial pacemakers. Pacing modes can either be asynchronous, like AOO, BOO, and DOO, or they can be synchronous, like AAI, VVI, and DDD. When a temporary epicardial pacemaker is in a synchronous mode, the pacemaker is able to listen for cardiac activity. This is called sensing. If the pacemaker detects cardiac activity in the relevant chamber, it will not fire an impulse to pace that region of the heart. Pause the video now to read more about these pacing modes. DDD is a more complex mode that can both sense and pace both the atria and ventricles and requires functioning atrial and ventricular pacing wires. There are four possible pacing rhythms in DDD depending on the underlying intrinsic activity of the heart. This is because sensing atrial activity can also trigger ventricular pacing. Pause the video now to read more about pacing rhythms in DDD. We can see if the pacemaker, or pulse generator, is sensing or pacing by looking at the lights at the top of the screen. Blue lights indicate sensing and green lights indicate pacing. The blue lights will flash when electrical activity in the heart is sensed and the green lights will flash when the pacemaker generates a pulse to pace the heart. Here, the pacemaker is in DDD and the heart is in sinus rhythm with normal conduction. First, the pacemaker senses the intrinsic atrial activity through the atrial wire, and then it senses the intrinsic ventricular activity through the ventricular wire. We can see this sensing as the blue lights flashing on the pulse generator screen. Here, the pacemaker is in AAI with only an atrial lead, and the heart is conducting normally. The pacemaker is sensing the intrinsic atrial activity as before. Pacing is inhibited in response to sensing, as the mode is AAI. This is because the I stands for inhibit. The pacemaker will not pace the heart if it senses underlying atrial activity. Now the heart has no intrinsic atrial activity. Therefore, nothing is sensed by the pulse generator and pacing is no longer inhibited. The pulse generator will now pace the atria at a set rate. The set rate determines how long the pulse generator waits while listening or sensing before generating a pacing impulse. Now we're back in DDD with A and V wires. The heart has normal atrial activity, but this isn't being conducted through the AV node to the ventricles. First, the pulse generator senses the atrial activity, then waits to see if it will sense ventricular activity. When none is sensed, it will pace the ventricles. The time the pulse generator waits between sensing the atria and pacing the ventricles is determined by the set AV interval on the pacemaker. This heart has no intrinsic activity at all. First, the pacemaker listens for atrial activity. When none is sensed, it paces the atria. It then waits to see if it will sense ventricular activity, and when none is sensed, it paces the ventricles as well. The time between A and V pacing is again set by the AV interval on the pacemaker. The sensitivity of a lead refers to how sensitive that lead is to changes in voltage within the atria or ventricles. We can set the sensitivity, and it should be set so that the pacemaker is sensitive enough to detect normal cardiac activity, like in this heart, and it should also not sense when there is no cardiac activity, like in this heart.
If the lead is too sensitive, it will detect any small electrical changes in the heart, for example random noise, and pacing will be inappropriately inhibited. This is called oversensing. Note that to make the lead more sensitive, we decrease the sensitivity setting, say from 7 to 2 millivolts. This setting is the smallest change in voltage that will be interpreted as cardiac activity. If the lead is not sensitive enough, because the sensitivity is set too high, it won't even detect normal cardiac activity, and pacing will not be inhibited, even when it should. This is called undersensing. This means the pacemaker will fire pacing impulses at its set rate, regardless of what the heart is doing on its own, as it's unable to sense the intrinsic cardiac activity. Undersensing can lead to dangerous pacing, including an R on T phenomenon, leading to ventricular fibrillation. We can set how sensitive each lead is at the pulse generator. The units of sensitivity are millivolts, a measure of electrical potential difference. The number we set for sensitivity is a voltage. A change in voltage less than this will not be interpreted as cardiac activity, while a change in voltage more than this will be interpreted by the pacemaker as cardiac activity. We can change this setting by using the dial on the bottom part of the pulse generator. In DDD, we can also change a number of other settings, and we select the setting to change by using the up and down arrows. Here, we have set ventricular sensitivity to 5 millivolts. Any electrical activity less than 5 millivolts will be ignored by the pacemaker, and any activity more than 5 millivolts will be interpreted as cardiac activity. Here, the pacemaker is able to sense the QRS complexes appropriately. Notice the ventricular sensing light. It can be helpful to think of sensitivity like a fence. The pacemaker is only able to see the parts of the ECG that peak above the top of the fence. If we increase the sensitivity setting, say from 5 to 10 millivolts, the height of the fence increases and the pacemaker is able to see less. This means the pacemaker is less sensitive and can lead to undersensing. Here, the ventricular lead doesn't sense the normal QRS. Remember that undersensing means the pacemaker can't detect the intrinsic activity of the heart, and this can lead to dangerous pacing. If we decrease the sensitivity setting, the height of the fence decreases, and the pacemaker is able to see more. This makes the pacemaker more sensitive, and can lead to oversensing. Here the ventricular lead also senses the smaller changes in voltage of the P and T waves. Remember that oversensing means the heart is picking up any small change in voltage and interpreting it as cardiac activity. And this means the pacemaker won't pace even when it needs to. Let's see that again. Keep an eye on the sensing lights. In DDD, we set the sensitivity for the atrial and ventricular leads independently as the voltage changes in these chambers are very different. We select which sensitivity to change using the up and down arrows on the pulse generator. Ideally, we want the atrial sensitivity set to detect P waves, and we want the ventricular sensitivity set to detect QRS complexes, but not T waves. We can see if it's sensing appropriately by looking at the lights on the pulse generator and comparing this with the ECG. Thanks for listening. If this video was helpful, please hit the like button. If you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to our channel. Feel free to get in touch by email if you have any suggestions on future videos.